going door to door asking if they could search homes looking for weapons. And they practice raiding the local gun shop. And this is for domestic operations. Let's go ahead and get ready to play this clip uh, from the state representative who called the governor's office. Uh, here it is. Uh, this was on uh, WNWS 101.5 FM news channel with the state rep. Within the, the Waiva Police Department had plans to conduct a seatbelt checkpoint on Saturday, April 4th at Highway 64 within the city limits of Whiteville. The checkpoint was planned to be in conjunction with Homeland Security and the 251st Military Police in Bolivar. After learning about this, I contacted Representative Johnny Shaw, who represents that area, ask you about this. Uh, Representative Shaw, you, you looked into this, and can you tell me what you've learned and, and where this stands now? I, I can. Uh, actually, this has been canceled. Some calls were made to the governor's office about this on uh, earlier today, this Friday. And, of course, the governor just simply said, I don't need another headache. <laughs> and, and, of course, it has been canceled. And I will say to you that it, is, it was a bad idea in the first place. I mean, during this climate and this day and time which we live, can you imagine the Army stopping you for a seatbelt check? You know, so it, it really was a bad idea. I, I don't think it will happen again because I think it would have frightened more people than it would have helped. And uh, I'm glad the governor made that decision. And uh, we will probably try to make this never happens again. We'll follow up with you on that, sir, and find out what steps are taken to protect, uh, to see that something like this uh, is, uh, the, the public is notified in the future. Definitely we will, because the public should have been notified if it was going to happen. And as I said, you know, with the climate that we live in now, if you can imagine uh, your wife, my wife, a daughter, or even son driving up on a situation like this, I mean, it could be a, a total panic. I don't know whose idea this was. It was a bad idea. And I'm going to make sure that I call all of the local authorities and ask them not to do this anymore, but if they should even attempt to, to make sure that they contact people like myself and make sure that people are notified as to what is going to happen. Thank you. Now, this is being done to acclimate the public so they don't panic when troops take over the city hall, the county, the state. And it's in John Warren Defense Authorization Act. It's in the Pentagon Directive. They recently put out last year with Brigade Homeland that the governors serve at the pleasure of the president and they are prepared to take over the legislatures. Just like they threatened Congress with martial law, they didn't do what the president said. This is high treason. And Obama has taken all these new powers that Bush claimed and has expanded them day one. Brigade Homeland Tour starts October 1st, 3rd Infantry's 1st BCT trains for new dwell time mission helping people at home may become a permanent part of active army and then you read this the washington post reported it everybody else did it says for riot control and civil unrest during a collapse of society then the army war college came out a month later and said yes we're preparing to engage the american people and the new uh, rules of engagement we've shown you the military training with local police to engage the american people getting ready for martial law getting ready for fema camps all being announced. For decades they've been preparing this and then it accelerates right as they have the controlled implosion of the economy. So there's that going on. So they have to have troops to take you to the FEMA camps. Washington Post, 20,000 more U.S. troops to be deployed for domestic security. They then expanded and said it won't be 4,000 troops, it'll be 20,000. And this was in December 1st, now four months ago. Now they're saying, oh, it'll be 40,000 regular Army troops. The, the very troops that were in Baghdad doing gun confiscation, the very best troops they've got. So there's the Washington Post article. Here's another one. Marines admit security force to operate inside U.S. This directly from the Marine Corps' own website. And they did it with role players, uh, you know, practicing confiscating people's guns. And again, we're putting our stories up on screen. If you scroll down, you can link through the mainstream news articles. Okay, uh, here's another one. Unit learned skills to fight different enemy. And uh, this is uh, out of the American Force Press Service. Military sets up domestic force. This is out of uh, HST today. And uh, NORTHCOM receives first uh, personnel under new plan. So 
all of this is going on, suddenly, by the way, we confirmed and got the photographs from Tennessee that Army was doing this. Army got canceled, but suddenly there were Marines marching around in the towns with their guns. See, this is all part of acclamation. And then in a four-state area in the Midwest a few months ago, there was a report about the Army suddenly locking down parts of cities and doing... And then the disgraced Governor Blagojevich uh, announced about five months ago before he had that big scandal, and we played the newscast here where he said we're going to have the Army go door-to-door -door confiscating guns in Illinois. And then we have the first time the Army got called in New Orleans going to the high and dry areas with the police and FBI. All the weapons will be taken. No one will be allowed to be armed. And then putting people in handcuffs that had guns, taking their guns. I mean, that's on record. That happened. This is what they're training for. All right, I've gone over executive orders. Uh, let's go ahead now and go over mass graves. Now, I told you we first learned about this from the Rocky Mountain News with the executive order in Colorado that built mass grave facilities and incinerators. It's mass graves prepared for U.S. citizens. Inside Denver.com, the Rocky Mountain News. Let's punch that up on screen for folks. Now, this is the Rocky Mountain News. Now, we go show you mass graves. We show you all the documents of what's going on uh, with the mass graves. And then people are in complete and total denial about that. Now, what does the media do? They focus in on something that may not be mass graves, or we're just checking into it. And then they say, well, we're expanding every you know, federal cemetery, but that's for you know large number of people dying. You know, you're a conspiracy theorist. Hey, we have all these mainstream news articles about mass graves, and I just put up on screen the Rocky Mountain News, February 8th, 2003, by Jim Erickson, Rocky Mountain News. State prepares for bioterrorism. Executive orders give governor additional powers. Mass graves prepared. Incinerators. Okay, now... In case any of you are wondering, this is posted up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. In a headline article, plans for mass graves confirmed, government surveying cemetery readiness for flu outbreak. We've had emergency managers on the show admitting FEMA's called them and said, we need you to get ready for millions dead. Okay? You can click on the documents. You can call the phone numbers. These are real documents, just like the MIAC report was real. And you can call, and they're, and they're asking cemeteries, this is out of New York State, all over the country, the feds are, for mass flu pandemic outbreaks to prepare them for mass graves and how many dead bodies they can bury and how fast at their facilities. So all we're doing is documenting that they have mass graves and incinerators ready, and that's a fact. Now, people then go out and s investigate, and sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. Just like... Uh, in the 90s, this FEMA camp stuff came out, and people went out and showed government facilities and said, my buddy worked in there and says they're going to use that Army base under martial law. And then later it came out that, indeed, that Army base is designated. You know, Anniston and others in Alabama. Then Glenn Beck points at that and says, look, that isn't, that's just an Army base. It's not a camp. Or other people go show the train facilities that aren't FEMA camps officially and then they say oh see you're discredited see they ignore all these mountains of real evidence and the admissions the government admitting they're doing this and then always go and find some person who's wrong or mistaken or who may be right they just don't have total proof uh, that's how they operate there so there are the mass graves confirmed but i've shown you the new york times and the wall street journal admitting camps i've shown you senate hearings i've shown you congress threatened with martial law they don't do what they're told I've shown you all the documents where they're getting the states ready for martial law. They're, they've reintroduced the National Compulsory Service under under H.R. 1444. Uh, it says for mandatory national service. Defense Department announces civilian expeditionary workforce in Pentagon Directive 1404.10. I mean, don't just sit there and say I'm making this up. Go to the Army's website. Go to the Pentagon. It says, management retains the authority to direct and assign civilian employees either voluntarily or involuntarily or on an unexpected basis to accomplish DOD mission.